that's 12 years uh, to 4, 4 to 12, they can go to the back door of the Children's Church. Thank you. All right. Praise the Lord. I'm glad to be here. It's a good day to be in church, right? Amen. Not at the beach. Um, it's good to have a baptism. Anybody, anybody want to get baptized? No. <laughs> We're thankful for your uh, being here, being faithful to church, those of you that came out today. As Taj mentioned, today is Mother's Day. And uh, my thoughts go to my own mother who passed away a long time ago. I can't remember, 1981, so it's a long time ago. And her name was Eva, Eva, which is like Eve in Italian. And uh, Eve was, of course, the mother of us all, of all the living. And so we can be thankful for our mothers. You need to honor them. And uh, by, by the way, how many of you are, are mothers here? Raise your hand. If you're a mother, raise your hand. Okay. Stand up, mothers. <laughs> um, and then uh, come on, come up, come up to the front, just for a second. Just for a second, come on front. Ladies, ladies, mother, mothers, come up front. We're gonna put you on the spot. No, we're just. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna read something for you, for you ladies. This is for the mothers, uh, and it's in Proverbs chapter 31, the, the, the virtuous woman, and it says, um, "Her children, children, her children, arise, arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth, praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all." Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. So I'm going to uh, thank the ladies for being here and uh, being uh, mothers for their children. I hope the children are here with them. If they're not, uh, that they get in touch with them today. And I want to uh, lift up these mothers to the Lord right now. Just we're going to pray, pray for the Lord and this is power heads. Thank you, Father, for this time. I thank you for these dear ladies that have uh, given uh, birth to uh, their children, that you've given them uh, uh, this uh, blessing to be a, a mother, but also the uh, children to have a, have a mother. Please bless them as they uh, look to you and use them in a mighty way during, this, uh, during their lives, as they serve you, as they look to you, the ones that are truly your children, that they would be um, faithful and guide the home and be your uh, workers. We pray for the Spirit of God just work in our lives, in their lives. We, we love you, we bless you, we praise you. And thank you for these ladies, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, I have something for you. She's got something for you real quick. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yes. So it's very sweet. Yes, it's very sweet. <laughs> anyway, um, so great. Uh, it's good to be together with you all. And uh, I want to read from the Bible now. We'll turn, open your Bibles and turn, turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2. Why don't we all stand up? We'll all stand up and give you a little bit, stretch your legs, and also a reverence for the Word of God. Genesis chapter 2, verse uh, 21. Genesis 2, 21, I'll read, and you can follow along. In verse 21 of chapter 2. And the Lord God caused deep, a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept, and he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh.
and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. I right, thank you again for this time, Father. Your word is your oracles. I pray that they may be uh, uh, spoken of uh, correctly by me, that we might, we might look to your word as a, a light unto our feet and a lamp unto our path. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the, the scriptures which teach us where the human race came from, how we all had our beginning, and we have this time just to bless you and praise you and thank you and rejoice in your goodness. In Jesus' name, I thank you. Amen. 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 I have a seat. Then. Uh, I, I, I prayed about what to preach this week, and I was happy to find a message which kind of fits what the day reflects, the Mother's Day. And I was very happy to see the thing. I was thrilled to find things in the Bible that uh, we all can... Every time I read the Bible, it's always new to me. I've been reading the Bible, I read it through 33 times in the last 33 years. I've been, I was saved 33 years ago. Years I spent in vanity and pride, caring not my Lord was crucified, knowing that it was for me that I had 36 years without Christ. I was raised uh, in a religion, but I didn't have Christ. And uh, I'm thankful that um, every time I read the Word of God, it, it's, it's always a new... Uh, yes. It's never the same. It's always a new aspect to it that I haven't even seen before. And of course, we, we had this time just to thank the mothers for being here today, and we can um, uh, learn a lot from our mothers. I wish I'd learned more before I, before I got saved. I think I'll, my mother, I'll see my mother in heaven. I can tell you a story about that, but right now it's, it's a long time to tell that story. Uh, the first mention of uh, things in the Bible is important. But now we're going to go back to the beginning, Genesis. It's, there's a thing. There's a first mention here of, uh, of a, a woman and a man, and so we're going to look at this uh, aspect of the beginning. And Genesis one and two give us the account of creation. Creation's fantastic. I believe that God created the heavens and the earth. He made man in His own image, and this is why we're all here today because God has uh, made us, has created us, and uh, we are fallen creatures. But then again, He can restore us through His grace. And God finished the creation. And he declared in chapter 1, at the end of chapter 1, it was very good. And of course it was good, and we're thankful that God makes good things. And it was perfect, and it's a wonderful world that he made. And then he, at the last day, before the, uh, he rested, he made man in his own image. And we're thankful for that uh, creation that God gave, special creation, to this world and to man. And the day that God made man, he made them... Both male and female. It's the seed. The seed of the man is the is one that determines the gender uh, of the of the of the child. Uh, I have two children, and uh, I didn't know it was, it was my fault that they had that, that gender, but uh, my was my responsibility. So Adam said something very remarkable in chapter two, verse twenty. No, chapter. I'm sorry, chapter chapter one. Uh, and uh, so God created man in His own image. In the image of, uh, well, not Adam didn't say, but God said this about Adam and Eve. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. So God made woman special, separate from man. Adam was out of the ground. Uh, the ground is dust. And Adam was told, you're going to go back to the dust. That's a pretty sorrowful thing, the dust to dust. Instead, Eve was the mother of all living. And she gives us life. So Adam will, uh, for as by one man, Adam, sin entered into the world, and death by sin. So the death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. For as in Adam, all men will die, in Romans chapter 5. In, in, through through the, the, the line of Eve, we have Jesus Christ. We have life. Amen. So the woman gives us life. She not gives you physical life, but her seed will give you spiritual life. Mm -hmm. That's a blessing to have. That spiritual life, and, and he made her perfectly, uh, perfectly for equipped for her husband with a purpose, and that's why we have uh, the the, ma the family, the home, the marriage, which we're going to talk about today a little bit. And he made her equipped. Even today, you women, you ladies, are equipped to serve uh, your husbands perfectly. And the verses we are uh, we read this of uh, this special day, we find the establishment of the home, uh, marriage. And the home are under attack, or they're being scrambled up these days. Uh, things are not the way they used to be. Um, we find uh, the man, the woman, living in harmony back here in the, the garden, the Garden of Eden. And then, of course, there's uh, Genesis chapter 3, which is a sad chapter in the Bible. 
But this is the basic foundation for the home. We find a, a great uh, uh, statement. Of, this is where Adam said something. He said in verse 23 of where we just read the, the text there, verse 23. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And uh, we have the, 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 the procreation of the, of the human race. Uh, normally, in the Bible, man, woman and man are, are in small, small w, small m. But here in our Bible, it says it, it has a capital M, capital W. So it's almost like a special, uh, uh, for the whole, create, the whole it precedes the whole universe of uh, mankind, man and woman. And so the, the, to all the men and all the women that will come after them, we have this uh, special uh, capitalization. And these verses set a precedent for us. And so we have this, uh, you know, a lot of people think that we come from monkeys. Uh, I don't believe that, so we know we come from Adam. The second Adam, of course, is the, be the best Adam, Jesus Christ. Amen. And um, Adam made mention here in verse 24 of father and mother. And... Uh, it's the first time, again, first mention of man, father, and mother. Adam and Eve had no father and mother. Well, no, God was their father. And, of course, Eve was taken from the man. And uh, they had no belly button, so there was not, they didn't have that problem there, that, that issue. And the establishment of the home, though, was started here. The, God created a family, then uh, church, and the government. So there's three institutions we have. And the marriage was between she, woman, and he, man. And that's why we have uh, the def that's the definition of marriage, uh, which is sometimes being failed in the hearts and in, uh, in the ideas of men. And the word father in the Bible is used uh, 1,214 times, a lot. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, the Lord's uh, economy, he sets up the father as the authority of the home. He's the head. The head of the man is the woman. The head of the woman is the man. Backwards. And the word father establishes the, re the rule that the man has in the home. And uh, the word mother uh, is a different uh, concept. It's used, it's used only 220 times in the Bible. It's a very uh, unusual word, though. And uh, if, you, if you take time to look up the word mother, I look it up in different languages, even in Irish. I have a daughter in Ireland, so I look it up in Irish, in Persian, in Hindu, Hindi. In all these different languages, they all look similar. It's amazing. I know languages, I know a lot of different languages, but how the word mother always is, is kind of goes through all the world is this mm word, the mother word, M word. And the word in uh, Hebrew is uh, M, M, I think it's Aleph, Mem. And uh, it's a, a, a word which kind of goes across the planet. So I'm going to give you the, the, the explanation of that, the, the, the word etymology. Etymology is the, def, is the way you find out the roots of words. I'm always trying to figure out where does, where does this come from? Like, where does, where do your, where does your name come from? Aaliyah, where does your name come from? Uh, Frank, where does your name come from? Uh, Andrew, I, know, I, I like to know where names come from. What is, the, what is the root meaning of that word? And so if you tell me your name, I'll probably start thinking, where does the name come from? So etymology is the way you just figure out where these words come from. And mother is a, a word which we can study out in the, in, the, in the, it's a secular study. You study out languages, but in a biblical sense, there's a biblical approach to languages. And uh, here, it's, it's, for us, it's interesting because in, in the, almost, like I said, almost every known language, the same root word is, in Italian, mamma, okay? <laughs> uh, it's a very prominent, popular name, and people say mamma mia. And so people have a, a lot of words which are sound the same, and uh, this word is uh, basically all from a lost parent language. You know, we had the Tower of Babel in Genesis chapter 11. All the world spoke one language. So whatever that language was, I think that somehow from that original language, that lost parent language, we still have the word mother came to cross all throughout the centuries, and we still have that uh, uh, concept of uh, mother and uh, the, the mother concept is very important to us today and uh, I also saw the word mother talks about glue glue I mean it sounds strange but she's the glue that holds the family together the bond you have a 
the husband, the dad, the work, he works a lot. He's not, he's not at home a lot at times. And so he has a great responsibility. But the ladies, you are the glue of the home, the heart of the home. You, you, you hold the family together as uh, you all, only you can do as uh, mothers and uh, wives, wives and mothers. And men are to rule the home, but women are to uh, bind it together. The women hold the family together. And the importance of mother in the home is, of course, uh, not very popular today. We've exchanged that you know, a woman has gone to career, maybe, which is not bad. I mean, if you read, we're going to read Proverbs chapter 31. A woman can work, but her main focus is the family, the home, and her own, her own uh, responsibility. It's important that women be faithful in the home. Not outside the home, but in the home. Second Timothy says this, When I call to remembrance, Paul said this to Timothy, the, his son in the faith, The unfeigned faith that is in thee, which dwelt first in thy grandmother Lois and thy mother Eunice. And I am persuaded that in thee also. So Timothy, who had a Greek dad, not much uh, spiritual there, but he had a, a, a Jewish mother and a Jewish grandmother who knew the Messiah. And to the Lord um, first, uh, their, the, the women would go to their husbands after that, and then their children. So mother, mom, mom, you are the bond of your home. Mm -hmm. And you bring it, you keep it together. It's always been a, uh, the heart of the home. If it's not, the, it's not, if it's not a, she's not there, it's not a home, it's just a house. And we don't want just a house, we want a home. And uh, she's the comforter, the guider, She's the instructor, she's the helper, and uh, it's important that the woman be a guide because she's at home with the children a lot. And uh, 1 Timothy says this, I will therefore that the younger women marry, bear children, guide the house, give none occasion to the adversary to speak reproachfully. And this is the uh, rule again, the husband is the ruler, the head of the house, and the woman is the guide in the home, as in his place, he's not there, he's, she's guiding her house. And the woman certainly has a great responsibility. She, she, is, she has to love, be faithful, and guide her children. And she has to have purity in her own life. She also directs uh, and gives advice to her kids. I mean, mothers give advice. Mothers say, this is good, this is not good. She tells them what's the best to do at home. And men are to be leaders, but the mothers will ultimately give a great Im impact on who the children become. I was influenced by my mother. We all are influenced by our mothers. Uh, you have to, if you had a mother in your house. And it's important that the woman uh, be a, a, a spiritual leader also in her own ways. And it's important that uh, she also have her desire be towards her family, towards her husband. Genesis says this in chapter 3. Here's a John. We have John 3.16. Here's Genesis 3.16. It says, And unto the woman I, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy, in thy conception. And in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Uh, the virtuous woman in Proverbs. Look, look at Proverbs chapter 31. The virtuous woman. Actually, it was in a... To remind you to spend time in Proverbs chapter 31, but I'm going to read it a little bit. The woman is a, she's a keeper at home, and let's read Proverbs chapter 31 and verse 10 and see how she is a, a keeper at home, and then also how she goes out of the house. She does both. Verse 10, who can find a virtuous woman for her, pruse, for her price is far above rubies? The heart of her husband doth safely trust in her, so that he shall have no need of spoil. She will do him good, and not evil, all the days of her life. She seeketh wool and flax, and worketh willingly with her hands. She is like the merchant's ships, that she bringeth her food from afar. She riseth also while it is yet night, and giveth meat to her household, and a portion to her maidens. She considereth a field, and buyeth it with the fruit of her hands, she planteth a vineyard. She girdeth her loins with strength, and strengtheneth her arms. She perceiveth that her merchandise is good, her candle goeth not out by night. She layeth her hands, hands to the spindle, and her hands hold the distaff. 
she stretcheth out her hand to the poor. Yea, she reacheth forth her hands to the needy. She is not afraid of the snow for her household, for all her household are clothed with scarlet. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry. Her clothing is silk and purple. Her husband is known in the gates when he sitteth among the elders of the land. She maketh fine linen and selleth it and delivereth girdles unto the merchants, unto the merchant. Strength and honor are her clothing, and she shall rejoice in time to come. She openeth her mouth with wisdom, and in her, in her tongue is the law of kindness. She looketh well to the ways of her household, and eateth not the bread of idleness. Her children arise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praiseth her. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellest them all. Favor is deceitful, and beauty is vain, but a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands, and let her own works praise her in the gates. So here you have the, the virtuous woman. She's in the home. She takes care of the home. Uh, she makes things with her hands. And But then sometimes, it, you read here, she's going outside. She's buying a field. She plants a vineyard. I live in Italy. They have a lot of vineyards. And uh, in fact, our neighbor lady is a very industrious lady. She's, she has a big, oh, not a big, she has a farm around her. She has crops and she has trees. And it's always good, good, good to see uh, uh, people that are farm, farmers because there's more uh, activity with your hands than if you just work on cell, well, cell phones or your hands too. But it's better to have a like, land around you than just the asphalt sometimes. And so this woman is very industrious and she goes out. She, here she's buying. She's, uh, she makes linen and she sells girdles. She sells all kinds of things. Yet, she's also at home, she, she clothes her children uh, with uh, scarlet. You know, if, you, if you're in a cold country like uh, my wife's from Canada, you, you wear red sometimes. It makes you feel warmer red with scarlet. And so this is important for the woman that uh, is in the home and out of the home, but not too much out of the home in the sense that she, she would, uh, you know, I've seen something happen uh, in, in Italy and here in America, uh, to survive financially, the husband and the wife go to work. So the kids end up in daycare, or the, or the kids end up with the grandparents. And not that those are, actually grandparents are good. Uh, I'm a grandpa, but you know I, I don't see him very often. I see him on Skype most of the time. So we have to uh, have those people in our lives, but uh, it's, always, it's probably better that the child would be raised with a mother in the home. So it's important, it's important that the mother uh, be at home and the mother work at home. Uh, she's a keeper at home. She also has to pray. I, you read the Bible, it talks about prayer. We all have to pray. But there's a, there's a mother uh, in the Bible who prayed. A woman, in, I mean, you don't have to turn there, Matthew chapter 15 uh, talks about that. And a woman from, of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto Jesus, saying, Have mercy on me. O Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, and he said some things about uh, his, the children of Israel first and not the Gentiles. And uh, she, she came and worshipped, saying, Lord, help me. And then she said, Truth, Lord, after you talked to her about uh, you should go first to the house of Israel, the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. So notice that she was always persistent in prayer. She kept going in prayer like the widow in Luke chapter 18. She prayed continuously. She, this, this judge said, okay, I'll give her what she wants. And Jesus gave this woman what she wanted. He said uh, that she had faith. And so it's important that you hold, you, you uphold your children, your, your family in prayer. Um, I think of a, I, I've been to, I'm from near Chicago. And downtown Chicago, where I would go, sometimes there's a Pacific Garden Mission. Now they moved a little bit outside that area. And there used to be a sign which said, uh, "Your mother's prayers are are following something. Like that. Your mother's prayers are following you here." And a lot of guys who got lost, sailors and drunkards and people who got went on a, went a, a, a wayward path, ended up in the Pacific Garden Mission. And a mother was praying for them, and some of them became Christians at the Pacific Garden Mission. Uh, prodigal sons, people like that. I was a prodigal son, so we all have to have mothers that are praying for us. And it's important for a, a, a woman, the mother, that she teach her children well. And the way, especially, there's one thing you need to teach your children, the way of salvation. How to become a Christian. How to know Jesus. 
that's the thing that mothers should impart to their children. Uh, Proverbs chapter 1 says, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. So if you're going to be a great influence in your, in your life, ladies, uh, be uh, a teacher at home. I mean, some people do homeschooling. My, my kids grew up with homeschooling. But the most important thing is that we teach them the Word of God, the devotions. There was a woman uh, in England. Her name was Susanna Wesley. Some of you heard of her. She had at least 19 children, maybe more, maybe 21, but two died, maybe young. But she had so many kids in the house that to, she prayed for them. She had, she had to pray, but she had kids all around her house, so how did she pray? She went and was, she sat down in a chair, and she took her, her apron, she threw it over her head, and she prayed while the kids were running around the house. Uh, so that's a blessing to know that uh, this woman prayed, and she had a son named Charles. Uh, we sing songs that Charles wrote. And John Wesley, who was a preacher, God used a, a mother who prayed for her children. And uh, you can do that today for your own children. It's important that a woman learn to love her family. Uh, first, or not, Tim, Titus, Titus, I'm sorry, Titus 2, 4 says that they may teach the young women to be sober, to love their husbands, to love their children. It's interesting. You have to teach women to love their children, to love their husbands. Some women have to learn this uh, in the beginning, but they all have to learn it. They all have to learn how to love each other also. So it's a right way to love and a wrong way to love. Children need the right kind of love, and the mothers have to do that. Uh, the, the Bible in Proverbs says a, a, a bear robbed of her whelps. It gives you an idea how much a mother loves her children. And uh, a, a bear robbed of her whelps would be like a bear that lost her cubs, and she's really angry. So we have to be careful how we uh, uh, love our children. And ladies, the Lord comes first. You have husband, children, home, but above all, the Lord is first. Mm -hmm. I have to have that in my life. We all have to have the Lord first in your life. Then your, then your husband, then your children, and then your home. In order for you to be successful in this life, uh, you're to be the bond, the glue, that holds your family together, that keeps your family in one place. Mm -hmm. And so ladies, uh, your life is a, a life of passion, to take care of your family, of uh, purpose to be a, 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 a godly woman and of purity to live a virtuous life. And one aspect of the virtuous woman which you read in um, right here in uh, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30 it says the woman that feareth the Lord she shall be praised she sh praised wisdom where does wisdom come from? The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom so if you're a, lady, a mother today or a woman, you fear the Lord. And that leads you to the wisdom of God, which is sanctification, redemption. Jesus Christ gives us that the gospel of grace. Uh, my salvation is due to someone who told me about Christ. And if you have Jesus Christ, you have life. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you don't have life. The gospel is very clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We have that example in Genesis, that sin entered into the world, and we're all sinners, we all need grace, we all need Christ. And then we have the, the, the judgment of, of God. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then we have the promise of life, that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So repentance from sin and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ will give you life, uh, if you've never received the grace of God as a lost sinner, today is the day. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Today is the day of salvation. Uh, receive Christ. He's going to save you. Uh, we can't do it. He can save you. And we have also a, a great uh, opportunity for those of you that are saved to teach others. Be a, a, an example. Older women should guide the younger women. The younger women should bear children and get married. But that's... The Lord's leading in your life to do this, to do these things as you follow the Lord. He will teach you. He'll guide you. And I think that uh, the greatest uh, gift you can give is life. And then the, the life, of course, is through Christ Jesus, is eternal life. So let's say, let's all pray and ask God to work in our hearts for what we've heard today. And that He might speak to our hearts. Let's bow our heads and pray. Thank you, Father, for your uh, your your oracles. Thank you for the time we could look at this time. The, book of Genesis, 
the Word of God. Thank you for the grace of God. Thank you for the salvation of Christ Jesus. Thank you for the examples of uh, godly women in the past. Uh, Abraham's wife Sarah, and even Ruth, and uh, uh, Hannah, and uh, of course uh, Mary, uh, the, the mother of Jesus Christ. I pray that you please would uh, uh, help these ladies here who are mothers to be godly ladies, help them to follow you, to be to do whatever is necessary to be a, 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 a good and profound influence in their homes, and help us as, uh, help the children to honor their parents, to honor their mothers and their fathers. And God help this church to grow in a family way, that there be families that would glorify you, that families would be held together by the mothers in the home and led by the dads as a spiritual leader. We ask this because you're worthy and you're, you're holy. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, um, I didn't even choose a song. Uh, I can think of a song right now. <laughs>